Have a lovely new Takamine. Takamine, Takamine. Uh, there you go. Take it out. And it's in lovely condition, lovely tuning. Uh, except for one little tiny problem, which might be of interest to some people. There's a little hole there. And none of the, uh, none of the glossy stuff None of the glossy stuff is left. There's only this left, these bits here. And what I've done, I've wet it, and I'm tempted to try to put that piece in there, but I'm not sure, because it's only a fragile piece. It's only thin. And I think what I'm going to have to do, first of all, is put a piece underneath it to strengthen it, and then work on it downwards. Uh, but but you see that the layer of the lacquer or the layer of the wood is the ultimate ultra fine and so I don't have any room for sanding to bring it down so it's going to have to go on flat right away we'll see we'll see as we go along now here's some further thinking I can can't get my arm in past there my arm just won't go past there so I can't get down to the bottom at all to put any pressure underneath so what I'm thinking of doing is cleaning out as best I can, getting a piece of maple about that size square, that size there, and then putting two little holes in the maple there, somewhere about there and there. Oh, every pen doesn't work there and there. So you have a, oh, come on. Give me a pen that works. Give me anything that works. Bloody hell. Okay, well anyway, there you go, it's a sort of a mark. And then that square cut out. Finagle it. Finagle it's a great word. Finagle it somehow underneath there. Hold in through there with a nut on the other side. And a piece of wood up here and tighten the nut to get this squished up against the back of the guitar. So that we give it some strength. And then we'll work on this bit to see what we can do about bluffing it. Because it's never going to be the way it was, but let's see what we can do to bluff it. So, two holes drilled in a square piece of wood, finagled to the bottom of the guitar. And then, oh, it sounds so easy, two screws going into it, bolts in the end and tightening it up. Oh, it sounds so simple. All right, there's my little square of maple. And now I have to try to fit it in there. Maybe have to round off the edge. If you, oops, sorry, wrong way round. Why it's the wrong way round is because the grain's going that way and I want the maple grain to go that way just to give it a little bit more strength. So I'm going to try finagling. That's my word of the day, finagling. I must look that up to actually see what it means. Must be Northern Ireland or Irish. All right, okay, I'll come back to you when I'm a bit further down the road. Right, finagling. What better use two guitar strings? Put two holes in it and two guitar strings that will pull through eventually. I don't want to make the holes too big. Put that through the main hole. Put that down in through there. Obviously, as you see, I've got an arrow on it so that I know which way it's going to go. Every only way is up, baby. So now what I have to do is get the strings through that hole and out through the sand hole. One chopstick, paper tape, guitar strings, two magical finagled wood. Now let's see how well I can embarrass myself. Sleeve rolled up. I've already done this in rehearsal, by the way. So this is a starring roll. This is gonna to have to be done several times as well, unfortunately because I'm only getting the size right. So this is just a part finagle. Right, okay, get the chopstick through. Right, okay, there we go. Chopstick through the hole. Where my hand can't fit, take my hand can't fit. Okay. Are we in focus still? Are we? 
I have nothing to clear but my genius, and that's not much to clear either. Let's just see if it works. Okay, get the, get the arrow around the right way. Now, something's not right. That all worked fairly well without too much finagling. Oh, I love that word. Uh, only one string though got through. So I took the other string off. I have a bit of manipulating to bring it to the back again. As you can see, the arrow is pointing downwards, which doesn't matter, that means it's in the right place. But now I have to figure a way leverage wise to glue that and keep constant pressure on it from the top. Well, I'll work on that. There you go. Eat your heart out. Rosa string works. Jerry. Jerry would scratch his head what I've done here. <laughs> I've glued it, uh, pulled it up tight, put a tiny bit of super glue around the edges just to hold it, put pressure on it, put the plastic washer on with the string through it and tighten it and then I put these on to add leverage against it so the cloth is just there to stop the scratching. So that's now has leverage until it dries. So I'll give it 48 hours until it dries. And fingers crossed. Here's the theory. Here's what I hope is going to happen. I've got this from, broke away from the guitar. It might be the inside piece, but I'm going to try to create a hole that shape and set that in because it looks similar kind of veneer. And as you can see, the veneer is very thin. The veneer itself is micro thin. So I'm gonna to have to work away at this with a scalpel to try to take away the veneer on this, plus a little bit, because I can't take away the wood on the back of that because I'll damage the veneer. So I'm going to have to take away the veneer plus a little bit of this here away deeper and get this bit to fit. And let's see what it looks like whenever I've done it. Right. About an hour later, I have worked at that and scraped at that. You can see the arrow now pointing downwards. You can see where the, uh, the wire was. So that now fits in there and it fits down in there. So it's about the same level as the veneer because it's a very thick, a very thick layer of gloss on that. So what I'm going to do now, you can see gaps all around it. Yes, right, yes. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue that in position with super glue. And then I'm going to try to figure out a way to fill in the gaps that look semi-neat. Okay. That's it glued in. Uh, the hard part is going to be all around it and staining it because I'm never going to match the stain that's there. I'm going to try to get close, but you're going to see this patch, no matter what you do, but it's going to be a strengthened patch and it's going to be hopefully not too noticeable. There's the patch in and the wood filler around it. And then the job is going to be coloring it. Right, this is the bit that annoys me. Because if you look at the color, trying to color that is not going to work, but I'm going to have to do it anyway. But if you look at that color and you see the chart that I have along there, you would imagine that antique mahogany would be like that. But looking at it in real life, it doesn't quite look like antique mahogany. And if you look at red mahogany, it's got a little bit more to it or rosewood even. So what, luckily I have a tiny fraction of wood left over. I can do a little test. I did a test with my wood filler pen, too dark, but it might do for the lines going down. Uh, I also have uh, a dozen other colors from other people, but you have to trust the bottle. Maybe that one there, which is called dark oak, but it's got a little bit of red in it. So this is a bit that I hate actually, because I'll never get that matched up the way that it looks. I also have to 
find a smoother filling paste because that filling paste has left a little bit of a, a roughness to it and you can't sand it because it's inside the little crack. So I'm going to experiment on this with different colors and I'll come back to you. Now, there's two colors there. You may not realize it, but there are two colors there. Let me get a little. That is called red mahogany. Come on. And that is called rosewood. To me, rosewood seems to have it. I have put a little bit of sanding sealer on it to give it a little bit of an effect. But I think I'm going to go for rosewood. Although there's very little difference, but I'm going to go for it. I got another manufacturer's color out that I have, the different make, and that's called rosewood. And look what they call rosewood. Look, a dark brown is what they call rosewood. That's why you can't trust these colors. That's why it's so annoying to try to match up colors. I'm going to go for the rosewood in the middle anyway. Now, when it's on there, you can see quite clearly the difference in colors. And you only get one chance at this. So let me just, let me just try taking a bit of, bit of this away to try to reduce the effect of it a bit. And when you think that a lacquer on top will change that again. I've got to now go around the outside with something to bluff it. Yeah, if I put another coat on that, it would just go darker. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are you seeing now? Let me just see. This is going to be a pain. I told you it was going to be a pain, right? Uh, you'll notice that what I've done is I've taken the lacquer away from the edges but left the underside of the wood so that I can fill in these little edges a little bit better and color them. Now, let's take it out. Oh, take it in. Right, okay. Now, I've tinted them already once, and I think I'm going to tint them again. Where's my pen? Where is it? Oh, there it is there. Right, okay. The, the big problem is going to get these level, which I'm working on. That one's relatively level. And then getting them colored. When I put the layer of... Uh, lacquer on this it should blend in with all these I might end up taking that lacquer away as well because it looks loose this has already been cracked up here but I'm hoping that some super glue and all etc would would fill that in you'll see a little bit of a gauge gouge there uh, nothing I can do about that that's the result of the crack so what I'm trying to do is bring this to a level. Now what I have noticed is that, I don't know where you can see it here, it's like looking at Mars. This is higher than that by a little bit and I don't think I can do anything about that. This is sitting slightly down in the hole. So there we are at the moment. I'll come back to you when I have more work done. Have I told you how much I hate these things? What you see here is the fourth attempt to try to get it the same summer shape. Now what you see on top here is a huge bubble of very thick super glue, which is higher than the base, but that will sit down. I might actually have to put another drop on it. Super glue is very good at sticking to super glue. And once that's done, then I start scraping and polishing. But that was some job. Pain in the ass. And then I have to start thinking about the other little cracks around it. What can I tell you? The, 
the top has come up fine. I'm happy enough with that. But it looks like the super glue has reacted to the filler and pulled out the color from the filler. So we'll only know what it looks like whenever I've sanded this down. Uh, if the only other option is to cut a chunk out of this and put a new piece in, but that's going to look just as bad. So we'll see what this looks like after I scraped and sanded. I started scraping, but I'm going to stop because it's still not solid enough yet. It should, it should be, it's solid there, but it's just a little bit not hard enough there. You can just tell the sound difference. So another delay, delay, delay. Right, boring, boring, boring. I brought it all down level. Uh, as you can see, the white is level. Uh, it had some little pinholes in it, so I've had to put some more uh, super glue. God, and I've touched up thin super glue into there. So the next stage is to let it solid dry solid for at least two days. Super glue dries solid instantly, but it doesn't dry solid enough. So let it sit for two days and I'll scrape it gently down to get rid of the pinholes. Then I'll sand it again because I sanded it with 600, 1000, 1500, 2000 and then 3000. And you can see that will polish off now. That there will just polish away. That's the 3000 grit. Okay. It looks acceptable. It's never going to look brilliant, but it looks acceptable. The little pinholes showed up in white, unfortunately. So I had to put color into the pinholes and then super glue on top. But we never thought it was going to be brand new looking. Well, different colors around the edges. The... the I'm not even sure, I'm going to say there's the only real way to do this 100% is to find the exact kind of wood and then cut out a square down there and around there and angle. But I think there's a strut going just about there, which is, makes it rather difficult. But it's not an expensive guitar and that is a fix that's nice and high glossy and looks good from a distance. <laughs>